Guys, welcome back. Episode 20 of the Jay Hutton Show. My guest today, a black belt in judo, uh, representing Team USA wrestler, Victoria Ooh. Anthony. How Hello. are you? I'm good. Yeah. Thank you so much for coming on. I know that obviously you've come over here for a very short time, um, so I really appreciate you getting us into the schedule. Yeah, um, problem. Busy. Um, I know that you're helping uh, Meatball Molly, mm-hmm. getting ready for MSG, right? Yes. How's that going? It's been so fun. Um, Molly and I have been like internet friends for a while. Oh, have you? Yeah, she she started commenting on my pictures and like, you're my, my wrestling hero, this and that. Oh, nice. And I was like, what? That's so nice. Oh, and uh, yeah, so she invited me. This girl in particular has a skill set similar to mine. Right. So it's kind of like a really cool blessing in that way because I was, this has been so ideal. I love this city, but I've never been here before. Yeah. Oh, you've never been to no, Liverpool? No, I've never been to Liverpool. How are you yeah. finding it? I love it. Everyone's yeah. so nice. Do you like, find that? Yeah. Some dude yeah. just outside, like he had like a worker vest on. He's like, oh, my, my British accent is so bad. Go on, I'm do not- it. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, do it. He's like, love. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to stop and tell you, your hair is so nice. <laughs> just for no reason. <laughs> and then he said he like worked in mental health and it's important to compliment people. And I just like, like when that. I was walking here, really? I love this place. That's yeah. so good. That's uh, so it's good. so that, cute. How are you finding the Scouse accent? Have you? I love you it. You come around yeah. to it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't always understand what's yeah. being said, yeah. but um, yeah, I'm learning day by day. I was going to say, have you picked up any, any Scouse twang while you've been over here? Has Molly been teaching you anything? I'd have to ask her to interpret every <laughs> little bit. <laughs> I know a, a boot is the trunk of yeah. a car, but I think that might be just like England in total. Yeah, it's yeah. British. Um, what else? Lad, lad after everything. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's a probably a Molly thing. Isn't yeah, it? I'm trying to think if there's anything sp- else specific. It's funny how, how things change, isn't it? Because um, I was looking, th- when I was looking through your Instagram before, I was looking through some of your highlights and I noticed that you said, I don't know if you know, the hot pot? Yeah. We call that a kettle. Okay, yeah. I've heard that before. <laughs> I thought, oh, I've never heard that before. Uh, hot pot. That's funny. And so, just pronunciation. Like, how would you say my last name? Anthony? Anthony. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. I've heard it like Anthony. Anthony. Yeah. Anthony. yeah. Some people say Anthony. Some people say Anthony. Yeah. 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 Do you say Anthony, right? Anthony. Yeah. All oh, right. Okay. That's, yeah. yeah. Okay. And so... um First of all, let's go back to the beginning. So where are you from? Where you grew up? What was that all like? Yeah, I was born in Palmdale, which is a city like um, north of LA in California. Right. And then my family moved to Huntington Beach when I was young in right. Orange County. And I grew up there, went to high school there. Yeah. I started wrestling, um, but oh. I did judo first. Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, you started I, with judo? Yeah, I started with judo. Thank God. Yeah? Yeah, my style is really just judo transferred over to wrestling and like edited for wrestling. Really? Yeah, from six to 14. Um, and that became my first goal to be- go to the Olympic Games in judo. Oh, and wow. I got injured. Um, I was throwing a girl and my hand slipped and I snapped my wrist. Shit, and uh, did you? yeah, but it ended up being really good because then I transferred, or yeah, I went to high school the next year. And the high schools in California have boys' wrestling teams, but right. there's no judo teams anywhere outside of like Hawaii. So I didn't want to because it was a boys' team, but I joined the wrestling team. Yeah. And then went from there. Yeah. So if you hadn't have broke your wrist, do you think that you it w- you would have still got into wrestling or maybe it would have just been a long time, years yeah, later maybe? Probably years later or not at all because I really, really didn't want to because I felt like it was social suicide to join, to be a girl joining the boys wrestling team. Yeah. And I was like, God damn it, I'm not going to have a place to fit in at the school now. And I'm also not going to fit on the boys wrestling team. So it kind of forced me that way because I couldn't grip anymore um, because my wrist was, ju- I had to have a surgery on it after. Really? And still it's like, if I do this too much, then it just starts to hurt. Oh my God. Yeah. Isn't it amazing how things can happen that are so like, slight that just change the direction of your life completely. It's isn't crazy, it? right? Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. So how old were you when you started judo? Six. Six? Yeah. Uh-huh. Wow. Six to 14. And... I, I don't know. <laughs> I I didn't get, like, my, my dad, nobody put me in judo. I would have to go watch my dad. He did a bunch of martial arts when I was young, like Filipino stick fighting, and he happened to be doing judo when I was six, and I would have to go watch. And I was like, okay, if I'm going to sit here every day, I want to do this too. Oh, this yeah, 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 yeah. And I wasn't allowed to because I was too young, and I just, like, tugged on the sensei's geese and annoyed them. Until, <laughs> and annoyed my mom till she annoyed my dad till he annoyed the sensei's till they let me practice. So, yeah, and I think it's just, like, it. yeah, in my heart. <laughs> oh, right. So did you train with your dad a lot? No, he would be at the practices, but he did it recreationally. And just immediately I got crazy about it and got really, I'm, I've always been really competitive. So. Yeah. Uh-huh. Oh, wow. So did you do a lot of judo, judo comps? I did. Yeah. Yeah. Like right away. And then I was on track to, I was, that was judo junior nationals when I broke my wrist. So I was on track to do what I wanted to do in judo. Um, yeah. Yeah, and then I went back for a little bit and competed in a senior level competition, like a pretty good one, and I did well. 
took second to an Olympian at that time. And then I was like, ah, it's kind of boring in comparison to wrestling. Yeah. It's slow, for me, a little bit slower pace. Yeah. And it's like, da, 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 nothing's happening. And then bam. Whereas wrestling's like, bam, 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 bam. Yeah. So, uh -huh. so yeah, because wrestling is a different ball game, isn't it? Wrestling's so hard. It, yeah, <laughs> it's, it, so hard. It, it's so hard. Yeah, talk to me about your wrestling career because it, it like for anyone who doesn't what like doesn't know what they're talking about with martial arts in lots of ways. Because I remember when I started doing jujitsu, a lot of people thought it was karate. <laughs> 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 I was like, no, it's completely different. <laughs> so it's a similar thing, really. So so wrestling with the boys must have been really difficult as well. Yes, thank God I was 103 pounds. That's the lowest weight class. Right. Um, because I think anything higher is going to be really extra tough. Yeah. My freshman year, since I had judo, I would just throw and trip everybody. And then I end up wrestling boys varsity. You guys don't, do you have varsity, like JV varsity? You don't I don't know what that is. That, yeah, what, okay. I, I've seen it on the, on the American shows, <laughs> yeah. but I don't know what it means. So the levels of high school sports, there will be like the freshman fresh off and then JV is like junior varsity. They're like not that good. Oh, and right. then varsity is the, the highest level oh, right. of high okay. school sport. So I was my boy, I was the boys varsity 103 pounder um, for the Shit. last three years of my high school career. That's amazing. Yeah. And then I ended up winning boy CIF, which is like a, the, it's a big tournament in the in California, in the United States, in California, yeah. and, which was a big deal. Like no girl had ever done that. And I don't know if anyone has since. Yeah. Um, so it yeah. went well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. Overall, it went well, but it was just weird. <laughs> yeah, was it? Were you the only, you were the only girl training there, were you? There were two girls on the team before me and one tried to bully me off the team. I was so happy. I was like, okay, there's girls here. This will be fine. And then one was like, she like, pushed me up against a locker after practice one day and was like, I, I, and at this time she, she was like, you're a slut. You're here for the boys. You're here. It was, she was kind of like very territorial. Oh my God. Um, yeah. And at that point, I don't even think I had kissed a boy. So I was like, this <laughs> blows. Yeah. Oh my God. That's heavy. Oh, I thought so too. <laughs> And you were teammates. Little, yeah, a little 14-year-old me, yeah, and she didn't finish wrestling, so. Oh, my God, but you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you went on to bigger and better things, so so that's mad. So how old were you when you started representing Team USA? Four, no, 16, 16. How old are you now, sorry? 31. 31. Yeah. God, you don't look 31. Oh, th how old do I look? <laughs> I was going to say about 24. Oh, that's funny, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you were 16, did you say? Yeah, yeah. My first international tour with the United States team was to Sweden. Um, and then for us, it's you make start to make junior world teams. So the age category 16 to 20 is junior level. Yeah. And then anything, I mean, you can start competing seniors at any point. But yeah. so I ended up winning the junior worlds twice. And that, that was my first world championship experience. And that was a big deal at the time because there's only junior worlds and then senior worlds. So it was yeah. like a step before. And yeah, overall, it's been a long career with Team USA, 10 years on the U.S. national team. Wow. Yeah. That's something I'm probably most proud of because I didn't, I never missed a year from injury or concussion or like just not wanting to do it, not feeling like it. Yeah. So, but there's a lot of times I didn't feel like it, but I was yeah, able to course. stay consistent. So. Well, that's a mindset that like athletes like yourself have to have, isn't it? Where you, you push through that. Cause I mean, you can pick up so many injuries. Well, you, you already have had yeah, one major yeah. one, haven't you as well? So yes. have you had any more, anything as severe as that? As my elbow? Yeah. Um, the first thing was my neck. My neck in, I went to, I did my undergrad in Vancouver, Canada. And <laughs> there was a year where my neck just, um, the discs are herniated. They're still herniated. I don't think they ever, it ever goes away. But I would go try to wrestle and cry on the side of practice and then just try again. And just that happened for a year straight. Yeah. Um, and the doctors were like, yeah, you're not going to be able, you, you need to retire basically. Really? And then I was like, that was kind of my first instance of, not listening to what other people just tr tried to impress upon me. Yeah. And I was like, okay, there has to be a way to figure this out and work around it. And after some just neck therapy and editing the way I wrestle, like yeah. not blasting people right in their sternum with a blast double, it's yeah. just moving my head to the side. Um, I'm fine for the most part. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's crazy, isn't it? That a lot of people would, I mean, if, if a doctor tells you you should stop doing something, a lot of people would stop doing it, wouldn't they? Yeah, exactly. And, you know, in some cases, you might have to take their advice. But when you're in a position that you are, like, it's, it, you got to find another route, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I'm like, okay, I'm not ending. I put however many years into this by that point. Like, yeah, it's your whole life, yeah, isn't it? Yeah, it's my whole life. There's no chance that we're just going to stop right now. And do have you been back to the doctors for any other things before? And they've been like, we've told you to stop doing this. Yeah, my elbow, they, they were <laughs> the first guy I saw was, did imaging and was like, your elbow's shredded and it's still shredded. They just, uh, I had a surgery. Yeah. Uh, my, my UCL is torn and then I had a bunch of bone chips and then that are so basically floating pieces of bone. Yeah. Some of them were the sizes of marbles. So yeah. my elbow just 
got stuck basically. Yeah. Um, and then bone spurs. So like the bone is jagged when it should be smooth. Yeah. And the first guy I, got, I saw for imaging was like, please retire after this. Really? <laughs> I'm not doing that. Yeah. Yeah. But it's, it definitely is common, just, but we have to learn to work around things. It's yeah, just what sport course. is. Yeah. Yeah. Do you find that you with what you do, you obviously pick up a lot of injuries and some major ones and some minor ones, but do you find that your tolerance for people, just normal people who have little injuries, you're just like, oh, shut up. Uh, no, I feel like it's <laughs> I mean, mine is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I really yeah. Yeah. I'm like, oh, come on, push uh, through it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. It's just a sliding scale of like um, enduring suffering. Yeah. And wrestling is the highest level of enduring suffering. Yeah, it is. So, I'm like, yeah, they haven't wrestled for 10 years, so whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And that's the thing about how, how how do you, what advice would you give to people about enduring suffering? Because, I mean, like you said, you, you live that life all the time, don't you? For sure. I think there's a difference between pain and suffering. Like yeah. we're, we're going to experience pain all throughout this lifetime, yeah. but it's up to us if we choose to suffer through it. Um, yeah. If you could just accept it. And really pain is an experience, yeah. like, anything else like joy or sadness or whatever it's like an experience that we feel in our body yeah. sucks but yeah of course it's going to happen yeah. like anything else in life that's going to happen yeah. so for me I just choose not to bitch about it as much you know yeah. and just not complain because it just makes me feel worse so yeah. I'm doing that to myself you know yeah and do you, do you get that mentality do you think that's come from wrestling or has that come from other life circumstances that have happened I think wrestling and then also just spirituality for sure yeah. like um Buddhism has really it's one of the basic premises of Buddhism that's probably actually where I got it is that um, there will be pain but suffering is our, up to us yeah yeah. Uh -huh. so you're big into spirituality yeah, yeah. I remember we yeah. talked about this the other yeah, day didn't yeah, we yeah, briefly uh -huh. yeah because um, like I said I had uh, I, I don't know if you know who the lady was I had on it last week she's called um, Psychic Sally and she's basically known as Britain's most loved comed uh, comedian, oh. <laughs> medium. <laughs> uh, yeah, most loved psychic. So she came on and so we were having a lot of chats about the spirit world and stuff like that. And are you, do you see the, the, the spirit world and spirituality as the same thing or is it more? Because I know that you do like the crystal stuff. Is that right? <laughs> the crystal I saw, stuff. Like, yeah, but I don't really know much about, this? <laughs> yeah, see, I don't know much about the crystal stuff. So I'm really That's intrigued so to know funny. about it to be fair. Um, <laughs> sort of on the crystal stuff. I'm honestly not that deep on crystals. Right, Molly, right. Molly saw, is pretty deep. Yeah, did you see the post with Molly? Yeah. yeah, yeah. we were identifying. I have a little rock identifier app yeah. on my phone. So, oh, you know. Yeah, for me, it's really plant medicine. That's like the majority of where my spirituality ex comes from right now. And yeah. just, I mean, just a way of life too. So I guess I'll take it back to when this all first began. Yeah, yeah, of course. In, in high school, I started to read about Buddhism. And yeah. I was like, oh, this is sick. It's not a religion it's become a world religion but yeah. it's really if you just read through kind of the teachings it's like a handbook or a manual to live a good life yeah is my opinion so starting to take on those tenets and practice them and just live my life like that it it turns into a spiritual perspective i think is what our um, you know our society would call it yeah and and then from there then it turned into chemical compounds that led me deeper. Yeah. Um, my first mushroom trip was when I was 18 and that like blew me open. Really? What yeah. happened? Um, I took half an eighth, so like 1.75 and it was the perfect amount to experience, I mean, experience what a mushroom trip can really give you. It was like in a riverbed in California right. with some friends and that was my first realization of time not being real yeah. <laughs> um, and just being 100% fully present in the moment. Yeah. And what else happened that trip? It was so long ago, but it was still to this day, it's one of the best days of my life. Really? It, yeah. It just expanded my consciousness is maybe the best way yeah. to say it. Yeah. It's insane. If that makes sense it? to anybody. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well, do you know what? I'm well into all this okay, stuff. Like, yeah. So like, yeah, I'm so interested in it because, um, have you ever done ayahuasca? Oh my God. Yeah. I'm like 40. <laughs> Two ceremonies deep. Oh really? Yeah. Well, I I I used to tattoo this lad right, and when he came in, he he was he was a bit scatty. Yeah. <laughs> he, he, he was. Wait, what does scatty mean? It means he like was a scattered? bit like, on edge. You okay, know, like okay. he was a bit. Yeah, he seemed a bit wired. To be fair, and that that also means like, how can I explain this? It means like intense. Basically, okay, okay. he's quite intense, uh -huh. right? So, and then I tattooed him a few times, and he was like this for the first couple of times, and then I didn't see him for months. Mm. And then he comes back for another tattoo. And he it was like a completely different person walked really? through the door. He was not like this at all. He was so calm. He was chilled. And I was like, what are you talking about? And he, what have you been up to? And he said, I've been away and done this ayahuasca. And I was like, what's that? So he told me about this 
the frog stuff. I, yeah, I don't I really have know that too much down about my arm it. as well. Really? Combo or Bufo Toad? Do you know? I don't know. Did he smoke it or did someone um, yeah, put it on his skin? On his skin. Yeah, yeah. The, because I, I like, tattooed mm. him and he put it on the tattoo and I was like, oh, it's ruined the funny. tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> Over top of it? <laughs> I was like, you're I'm just the stabbing face of the it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm sorry, can you just go over it? I was like, yeah. Where was his tattoo at that he did? The whole sleeve, but he'd been having it throughout his arms. Oh, really? Yeah. So what is that? What? So Combo is an Amazonian tree frog and it has an excretion from its armpits <laughs> All right. that when they, so they'll scrape it off gently if they're doing it properly yeah. um, to not take too much from the frogs which is really important yeah it, it's a medicine that basically um, it's a cocktail of a bunch of different peptides that only exist in that that secretion like if we isolated all those peptides and put them together it doesn't have the same synergistic relationship right. so it comes like that package like that from the frog and it's poisonous to our body. So you go through uh, what could be like a five to 30 minute experience, depending on how much you're resisting, <laughs> which oh, really? kind of goes back to the idea of suffering versus just experiencing it. Yeah. Just let yourself experience it and surrender. Then it can be really short. Like the last one I did was five minutes, but other people are fucking passing out and like, can we curse? Yeah. Okay. Say what you want, yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> say also, what do you I look want. at you or do I look over here? I look at you, right? Yeah, over yeah. Here. Okay, just checking. It doesn't matter. Everyone that. knows Jacob's here. <laughs> okay. Um, what was I just saying? Yeah. So our our body has a physical reaction to it that you'll begin to sweat. You kind of if you get it lower on the fur, further away from your heart, like I've had it on my ankle, then it lasts longer, and you f- kind of feel like um, like cartoons, how they have heat coming out of their ears. Have really? you seen that? Like it starts and it goes up your up your whole system and you'll likely purge so vomit <laughs> or you yeah. might go poop and yeah, one really. of the two and or just sweat and just sweating it out is a purge and with all these amazonian medicines ayahuasca um combo there's a bunch of other ones that are tobacco based which tobacco in the jungle is sacred it's not kind of this bastardized bastardized version of tobacco that we we smoke out of cigarettes and has a bunch of chemicals in it it's um it's a cleansing and protective medicine and energy. Yeah. So anyway, all of them have some aspect of purging from the physical body. Wow. Which is really one of the bigger things I've taken from all of these experiences I've had with plant medicines from that region is we, and this is just medically proven um, that we store emotional trauma, mental stuff, everything in our body. And then eventually after a long enough time, it may uh, materialize as an injury or illness. So all of these medicines will pull shit from your body. Um, so with combo, it's very physical, like very, very physical. There's no, it's not psychedelic at all. (laughs) It's not a good time. It's not an enjoyable experience at the time. No, it's just like pure suffering. If you wanted to be (laughs) suffering. Um, but, but then after you feel really, really clear, like, uh, the, the warriors and, tribesmen and um, hunters will use it before they go hunting at night because it makes your vision sharper and your hearing clearer. And overall, people will use it to purge specific anything, whatever energy they're trying to get rid of. So um, yeah, it's often used for addiction or Lyme's disease is one thing I've heard. Cancer, when people don't have something to turn to, they try this and yeah. Mm -hmm. That was incredible, isn't it? It's crazy, right? (laughs) It is is mad. Where did this all start? You know, like when Mm -hmm. you you think that people just get that from a frog and think, oh my God, I'll just fucking stick this in me and see what happens. You know, it's, mm-hmm. it's a, lot, a lot of trying and testing, isn't it? Um, I would assume so. And that's the thing too about the intelligence of indigenous cultures and indigenous tribes is they have this this deep connection to the earth and this wisdom that at least in the US, I feel we're extremely disconnected from. Like it's not even considered, the earth to be medicine isn't like a consideration anymore, yeah. especially in the U.S. because everything is pharmaceutical, maybe yeah. I think significantly more than anywhere else. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that deep connection and I think passing down from from ancestry of how to how to do this shit. But even ayahuasca is so crazy to me. I don't know if you're familiar with how it's made. No, not at all. So ayahuasca itself is non-psychoactive. It's just a vine. Um, and the vine is an M- MAOI. So it's a monoamine oxidase inhibitor, which is an enzyme we have in our stomach, monoamine oxidase. And when that's combined over like an eight hour period of brewing, which is a that's crazy in itself because yeah. that, that process can get fucked up or if the ratio is wrong. Yeah. It gets combined with another plant called chacruna. And the chacruna has a really high DMT content. And DMT is in everything. Like, yeah. as you probably know, it's in our bodies it's in plants outside. Yeah. But if we don't trip from eating salads because of the <laughs> monoamine oxidase. Right. So the ayahuasca vine will inhibit that enzyme so yeah. that the DMT can become active consciously. Yeah. And when I when I first started reading about ayahuasca, I was like, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. There's millions of plants in the jungle in the Amazon yeah, and it's the most biodiverse 
area in the world, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. For for people to find the one plant and the one plant and then brew them for eight hours yeah. and then that's what ayahuasca is, I'm taking it. What yeah. the fuck? That's like for us to find, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's 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 incredible that like these from natural things from the plants and stuff that you can heal yourself in lots of ways. It's interesting what you say about in America it's all pharmaceutical based, and that's yeah. true, isn't it? Because Obviously, it all, it's all revolves around money, and that's why I keep everything going. Yeah. But they don't really want you to know this stuff. For sure not. For Absolutely sure not. not, because we'd all be <laughs> fine, wouldn't we? <laughs> yeah, and they've ch- basically, like, a lot of this stuff got blended in. There was so much research going on. I mean, it's more like mushrooms and other psychedelics, and LSD. But um, they tried to patent some of these plants, like ayahuasca, and it was like, you can't patent a plant. No. So, like, that's out. <laughs> They're yeah. gonna work. And if you try to look things up, the, the, the internet makes everything sound extra crazy. Yeah. To, I think, you know, to keep people away. So yeah. there's so much to it. It's Shouldn't great. really Google anything if there's something wrong with you. you yeah, no, definitely not. Uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> so you've done it 42 times. Yeah. That is heavy, that. <laughs> 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 that, is, that is mad. I haven't even done it once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But the reason, reason being... Um, <clears throat> <laughs> there's, there's a lot that goes with this. Yeah. So I started doing it just for myself. Basically, in 2018, I was on track to make the Olympic team in women's freestyle wrestling. Um, but I, I just would kept losing, and it felt like something subconscious. Uh, and I'd worked with every sports psychologist. I'd, wor- I'd read all the books on sports psychology, and I would still be losing in moments that I would literally be winning a match, and then something inside of me, something deep rooted, it felt like, would be like. Do I belong on this stage in front really? of all these people? Like self doubt, self doubt, and I just hadn't worked it out for myself yet. But yeah. I was willing to do whatever was necessary, like anything possible for my goal, and that's still that's how I am with everything. Yeah. And um, I had been reading about ayahuasca for a number of years, like five years at that point, and I was like, okay, if, maybe this plant will tell me something I don't know. Yeah. And in my first ceremony, I got in there, and everyone's dressed in white because it's a part of how ceremony goes. Yeah. And I stuck myself in the corner because then I would have one less person to talk to. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a wall, and then another person. Yeah. And I was like, fuck, I shouldn't have come here. Like this, what is a plant going to teach me? A new move? Like, yeah, yeah. what could it possibly? <laughs> uh, it's like this is a bad idea. And then it turned out to be a really good idea. So, oh, really? So yeah, like a really good. Clearly, 42, 42 yeah. ceremonies later, but um, that those first ceremonies in particular were all to do with opening my heart. Yeah, which I realized after a bit of work that is just very, very closed, like locked and guarded. Really, and um, that was one of the things that like led me to ayahuasca in the first place as well. Was that I would see people win really big or lose, and and have s- such an emotional expression for it, like Russian men, they're like stomping and like pulling their hair and not leaving the mat, whereas. For myself, I just was completely disconnected from my emotions at the time. Really? I just was so logic minded. And I I was like, maybe I'm missing something. Really? When people say dig deep, I'm like, I don't know if I have a bag to dig deep out of because no. I just didn't feel it the same way that I noticed other people did. Like, was there a particular reason for that that you've maybe figured out now or, or not? I think it was truly like not being heart centered and open in my heart. Like I... Um, I just, I was the type to shove everything away, like shove it, shove it, shove it and never really? deal with anything. Yeah. 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 And I was like, I'm just fine. Block out. Yeah. I just tough everything out, yeah. you know, <laughs> and not process things. And yeah. I never cried ever. Like, um, just right now. Really? <laughs> like ever. Um, You've never cried? No, never. Like maybe a bit on my own, in my own space. But just recently I cried in front of my younger sister. I mean, recently, a few years ago. And we talked about it a bit ago and she was like I think that's the first time in my life I've seen you cry <laughs> oh my so, god like a true disconnection from my emotions in that way and even still no not even so now, no, <laughs> now, now, now after all this back. stuff yeah 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 no, and I like crying that's now. good yeah it's part of the purging it, it, process it's, it's almost like what you're saying before it's like you have to release it don't you yes exact, exactly you have to let it out otherwise you're bottling so, up and keeping all it all that shit was just shoved where all those tears that never came out yeah. were just somewhere inside me and yeah. that's what it started to pull up and just, I started to process things that I didn't even realize were in my subconscious. Like um, that first ceremony, I had a big cry release over an ex-boyfriend that I literally never thought about, but it's because I just shoved away all of the things that had happened. So you brought out like the trauma of it. Yes, exactly. Exactly. So yeah. And then from there, um, I, the, the medicine basically we, we, speak about it like it's a conscious being in plants. I think that's scientifically proven now too, that plants are conscious, um, sentient. And Mm. so the language around this is just the plant speaks to you. And 
ayahuasca after a certain number of the ceremonies basically told me you're called to this medicine. You're called to serve actually in the long run. And I was like, no, the fuck I'm not. <laughs> like, what are you talking about? <laughs> because there's so much that has to happen for that to happen. Like year, the same with, with sport, like years of practice um, yeah. in order to hold space for people safely and, and interact with the medicine and learn it. And so that's, so now at this point I'm apprenticing basically. And that's why I'm sitting in so many ceremonies. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, yeah. do, you, do you see yourself maybe teaching it and stuff as well? Yeah. Like, like holding space for the medicine or serving it um, in some capacity. And it's just, it's really not up to me. It's not a thing that I, I feel like everything else in my life I chose. I chose judo. I chose to wrestle. This chose me yeah. <laughs> and it kept aligning and it kept like showing up in places that I would move to. I moved to Canada for a year and Bam, someone just happens to, to tell me about a ceremony. I'm like, no way. I'm in the middle of, no for me, it was kind of like, it wasn't the middle of nowhere. It was a small city in Canada, a small town. Yeah. Um, and yeah, and so it, it just kept showing up for me and I just kept answering the call, basically. That's mad, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> do, you, do, you feel, do you feel like your life is planned out for you or do you just think? Yeah, good question, good question. <laughs> do you think that? I, I believe that every possibility exists, like every my life could go a number of ways and I believe there's a highest timeline for myself. Yeah. Um, and so long as I keep making the choices that keep me on that highest timeline, I could not go to practice. I could choose, like we have free will is how I see the world. We have free will, <clears throat> but there is a highest plan, um, it, but it's up to us to get on it and then continue to move along it. Yeah. And it's not to say that things, things that seem to off track us aren't, not part of the plan. They're part like my, me breaking my wrist and taking me out of judo, and moving me to wrestling. Yeah. That was still a part of my highest path. Yeah. Um, and it's to me, it's just about continually being in what I would call divine flow. Yeah. Or just flow in general uh, as a principle. <laughs> yeah, because you find yourself, don't you? If you if you resist things a lot, it just never goes right. That's but once one, you just yeah. let go of stuff and you just go with it and just stop trying to control everything, control what you can and not control, and stop trying to control the things you can't. Mm -hmm. A lot of things start falling into place. That's it. That's why, yeah. They? Just the resistance is what makes things painful or makes things, that's what creates suffering, right? Is to resist whatever we're experiencing. Yeah. I don't think a lot of people realize that, you yeah. know, that they're creating their own suffering yeah. through trying to resist everything. Uh -huh. And that's one of the biggest things that the plants teach because you, you have to surrender to the experience. Ayahuasca, you literally won't have a trip. You won't experience anything if you're, if you're resisting the whole time and your mind's just going, which I've experienced a number of times because really? I was so mentally mentally strong, but also just in my head. Yeah. Um, that my first few ceremonies, I didn't have hardly any experience at all because I was just thinking the whole time, trying to control it. And it's about just leaning into yin versus yang. So yeah. yin is just being young, just doing. Yeah. Uh, I was trying to do everything the yeah. whole time and there was nothing to do. You just sit and it's basically a silent meditation for eight hours. Not yeah. eight hours. No, that's wrong. Like, <laughs> like maybe like four hours and just in total. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's crazy that your your mind was blocking it off the first few sessions, isn't it? That That's crazy, you right? can and that you can equate that to anything else that you do in your life. You put mental blockers, like well, you said yourself, didn't you, that you were losing at one point and you were thinking why, and it's because there was a mental block. Yes, yes, that yes. You had to figure out, and same happened with that situation. If you don't let go, yeah, you can't experience it. Yeah, can exactly. You? Letting go is like the whole premise. If you just continually can do that, then everything happens. <laughs> you yeah. don't have to do anything. Really? Yeah. Have you, so, have any of these things ever ha given you like an out of body experience or anything like that? I got too high on mushrooms once. <laughs> I was like, uh, no, I'm, I'm I so did, interested yeah. to know this. Though. I, at that time, I didn't. I did. I've never actually personally been out of my body. Although yeah. I do have one thing that I'll mention close to that. But <laughs> but that time, I just felt like a balloon that had got released into the sky, and I was like, <laughs> really? okay, this is floating. I, yeah, just floating. And there's another um, Amazonian medicine called hape. Have you heard of it? No. Hape. It's a, a shamanic snuff. So it's basically medicinal plants that are pulverized into a really fine powder. And then through a pipe, it's blown into your nasal cavity. <laughs> so if you've ever seen an image of like a dude that looks like he's from the jungle. And, <laughs> and then, yeah, that'll ground you. And, really? Yeah, and center a person. So I, I really like that medicine. It's only like a five to 15 minute experience. I can really? serve you if you want. <laughs> it's, uh, it's really nice. It's really I don't know. Like, I'm fucking nervous. <laughs> it's really lovely, like a really good experience. Um what was the original question? About, about you know, have you ever had an <laughs> oh, out of body yeah. experience? I, have, I actually haven't. Um, there was one time that I was meditating, though. And have you heard of transcendental meditation? 
No. Okay. God, so, you you, you uh, are well <laughs> cleaned up on a lot of stuff. I go deep. Um, <laughs> someone asked me recently, like, did something significant happen that made you spiritual? And I really thought it through. And I don't think that no, nothing, nothing really happened. It's just that I. I, I want to understand the world and yeah. I, I'm just a really big explorer and seeker. But yeah. I, one answer is not enough. So no. I just keep going yeah. until it, and it just keeps going forever. Yeah. Yeah. Um, it's how you grow though, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, but, so you had this experience. Oh yeah, I was meditating. I was, this was when I was in Vancouver. Or no, I wasn't, sorry. I was in Calgary, Canada and COVID happened. So I was just in my apartment and I was building, um, I decided to start building an online resistance bands business right. and I had been working like day, like I was not sleeping at that time I was just trying to make this happen and um I got really I was getting really tired and transcendental meditation you, it's a 20 minute meditation and you repeat a mantra to yourself and the mantra kind of just plays in the background and it more or less puts you to sleep it, it brings you down to theta brain state yeah. so beta alpha theta which is like right before sleeping yeah and um and then you feel like you took a nap so I start this meditation and I was not on any drugs. <laughs> I, I had a microdose, nothing. I was 100% sober. I was just tired. Yeah. And um, that's kind of another like thing that taught me about resistance versus not my my mind being so active because I dropped into this place, this state where I felt like I was one with everything, like kind of the place that psychedelics brings people. But it was just from this meditation and my chest, or it felt like my chest was vibrating, which I read about when people have like they, they intentionally go out of body that they'll have their chest vibrate. And I could feel the separation of my physical body to my mental body, to my emotional body. Really? And yeah, it, it felt like I, I felt these separate layers, which yeah. is what plant medicine kind of shows too, is that we were working with different bodies. Um, although we're all as one person, but anyway, I, I was like, this is the place that I could leave my body. I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It probably is. yeah. I didn't, but that's what I was, I was like. I think this is how it happens. If you carried on yeah. going a bit further, maybe yeah. it would happen. Yeah. It's, people do have that experience. I was gonna say, have you had they? a knee or no? God, no, no. <laughs> Not interested. No, <laughs> no thanks. I don't know. Like I, this all seems interesting to me. I, I like hearing the stories a bit, but I don't know. If, I don't know if I have the bottle to do it myself. Mm. <laughs> but I did. I was watching a. I mean, there's a lot of people who'll know who, who Wim Hof is. I don't yeah, know. If you, yeah, who, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. So I've, I've, I was researching him for, following him for years, basically. Mm-hmm. And he's, he's just started doing like TV shows over here and stuff. So mm-hmm. there was like a, a program where a load of celebrities go and he, he teaches them all this stuff like ice cold shower, ice cold baths, cold showers, and then meditations and all these things to help heal your body. Mm-hmm. But I've been reading his books and stuff before that. And obviously he does these breathing techniques. So it's a bit like a meditation and the breathing technique. So I I have to, I tried that a few times. And that's the only time I think I've thought when I've done that properly, I thought, I really can't feel my body. Like it's I feel crazy. so light. Yeah, uh-huh, like, uh-huh. And I think as well, if someone tells you to hold your breath, you almost panic because you yes. think you can't breathe. But when you do this, I could hold my breath for like I could never imagine of holding hold my breath over a minute. Right. But I could hold it for two, three minutes at one point. And I was thinking, how the hell is this happening? It's just <laughs> getting yourself into that state right. where you're totally relaxed and light and that's the only thing I've ever experienced where I thought this actually this is real like yeah and yeah. it feels like you're separate from your body and stuff and I totally believe that you know <clears throat> you can you can heal yourself from a lot of things mm. into in, in in terms of physic physical stuff as well because I remember watching a I don't know if you've heard of a guy called Do- Dr. Joe Dispenza yeah 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 I've read so his books all and this all stuff that. as yes. well and mm. do you know his story about when he broke his spine yes and he yeah. healed himself it's crazy and I just, you know when I tell people that story they're like whatever I'm thinking <laughs> he actually did though yeah no, you know, he like, really did <laughs> you can say whatever but he actually did it you know documented <laughs> and which shows that you know the power of your mind and is is absolutely incredible but I think a lot of people are too scared to delve into it right um and even maybe I am to an extent because I, yeah. I don't know if I want to do that. We'll start stuff. slow. We'll start slow. Where, like baby I, steps. I don't know where my head will go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it, yeah, I find all that really interesting. Yeah, and I think uh, one thing I came to understand is like if I can create, if he, if Joe Dispenza can do that for himself, he can heal himself. And there's plenty of other stories like that. Yeah. Then I have the capacity to make my life hell as well, right? Or yeah. like the, my mind is so powerful for me to be running thought patterns that aren't aligned to what I actually want for myself. Yeah. I got to cut that shit out immediately. Yeah, yeah. So the meditation has really helped with that too, of just yeah. like gaining the space to recognize when I'm um, 
maybe repeating something to myself that is not what I actually want. Yeah. Like, I was a really small, silly example. It was one night I was car camping in my, I was living in my car and I was really cold yeah. because it was really cold outside. And after I couldn't sleep, I was cold. But after like an hour of being annoyed, tossing, turning, not being able to sleep, I, I realized I'd been repeating, I'm cold to myself for an yeah. hour straight. And I'm like, well, I'm not getting any warmer by continually repeating to myself, like I'm cold, uncomfortable and unhappy. Yeah. So I just started to tell myself, like, I'm warm, I'm cozy. And then I end up waking up and falling asleep. Yeah. Just little things like that, though. It's like if we can catch ourselves and reel it back. And then for me, my practice is to replace it with something else like that. Like I just replace I'm cold, I'm warm, replace yeah. what I actually want. And I think that's a big one for sport, but really for anything as well. Like, um, in practice or like I dealt with a lot of self-doubt a lot. Yeah. And, and so starting to catch my thoughts and then have something to replace it with. Like if I was like, I'm, I don't know if I can do this or, um, even just I'm tired. Like in practice, if I'm repeating, I'm tired over and over. I very well may, may be tired, but I'm not yeah. getting less tired yeah. by, do, by saying that. So I, my easiest replacement, I just started to repeat to myself, I'm the best in the world. Yeah. Like whenever I was saying something I, in my head, I didn't want to be saying. Yeah. Um, I just changed it over to I'm the best in the world. And yeah, I do genuinely believe in my ability to be the best in the world. Yeah. And that it's just a timeline that's I'm just at a, I'm kind of at the beginning of with yeah. MMA, but it, it exists already and I just have to keep going and I'm online. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's once you get into your head, it's a case of when, not if. Mm. And you get into that state of mind. Like that's that's how I think, and that's it. And there's nothing like it takes a lot of training, though, doesn't it? It does. It's like anything. It does yeah. To train your mind to 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 snap them thoughts out your head. For sure. It takes a long time. I think yeah. there's a lot of people who watch and go, "Yeah, well, I can't do that." Well, there's that thought straight away, isn't right, it? Right. Exactly. That's the one. Yeah. Straight away, so nip it mm -hmm. in the bud straight away. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So are you headed towards MMA now? Is that where your yeah, head's at? Hundred percent. Yeah. It's so fun too. Like I don't yeah. think I didn't think wrestling was fun. I just like I don't know why I did it for so long. Well, you don't find wrestling fun. <laughs> No, I do. I love technique and I yeah. love self-expression, but yeah. wrestling day in and day out is just—it's really hard. Yeah, um, I'm sure I, it was it for sure was fun, but like I, not in the same way that I find MMA fun. Yeah, like this shit is so fun to me that there's so many tools that can be used. I have to yeah. defend against so much, and and it's a true full expression. Yeah, for for wrestling, for example, to be the best in the world, you have to be able to win matches one to one or one to zero, um, or like two one, like very tight matches, and basically. You can't make a mistake in yeah. six minutes, which MMA is the same. It's like who makes a mistake first. But for me so far, I find that I can express myself much more fully in MMA. And I just find the training really fun. And the training's way less hard on my body. Yeah. And yeah, it's a good time. <laughs> I, I, I bet some people who, who don't know anything about uh, like martial arts would would think that was mad hearing you say that, that it's not as hard on your body. I thought it was mad too. Yeah. <laughs> but um, my friends, a few friends that I that were in the UFC, so Henry Cejudo has mentored me through my whole wrestling career and he's one of my good friends. Yeah, awesome. He would tell me all the time when I was still wrestling, like, Victoria, MMA is so much easier than wrestling and he's Olympic champion in wrestling. Yeah. And I was like, that is insane because Isn't like, it? look at you guys, yeah. bloodied and all, all of this. Um, and I had some other friends that would say the same thing that had been on the national team and transferred to the UFC. And now that I'm actually doing it, it's true because first of all, most of the training, we're not hitting each other hard, right? So there's a lot less like, abrasive action yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Whereas wrestling, it's abrasive the whole time. Yeah. You're also in a wrestling stance, which is exhausting. You have yeah. to be squatted down yeah. for the entire time for like hours a yeah. day. And uh, also in wrestling, we're getting headbutt all the time. We're headbutting each other. And that's like the one thing that's actually illegal in MMA. Yeah. <laughs> so it's it's really just a rough sport. Mm -hmm. It is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, f I find that wrestling, like shooting takedowns and all that time. Yes. Like you said, <laughs> you see? Breaking your neck and yeah. practically. And like you said, taking a lot, you're taking a lot to the head, aren't you? So, yeah, a lot of, and like a lot of compound on, on your neck, yeah. back just all these specific injuries because of wrestling. Yeah. How do you, has it had any effect on your posture at all? Uh, wrestling? Yeah. First, yeah. I'm pretty sure my shoulders are more rounded than they really? should be. And when I first started learning striking, people would be like, turn your shoulders. And I'm like, I'm trying. Yeah. It's like a block that's designed this way. Yeah. And now I have to be able to move this way, you know? Yeah. So that's taken a while to it open up. Yeah. And it still takes time working to train that out, yeah. doesn't it, uh -huh. as well? And how long have you been training in MMA now? That's a good question. I moved out to San Diego to um, May of 2021. So a year and a half about. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, about a year and a half. Oh, wow. As, and yeah. have you trained jiu-jitsu for a long time? Um, I would say cumulatively, maybe like a year now. Right. Um, because most of my training, when I started 
just training for MMA was striking based um, and judo, uh, judo jiu-jitsu I would say it was like 25% yeah just because I was like okay I have to start on my feet <laughs> and yeah, of course, yeah. I have to get two takedowns in order to use jiu-jitsu yeah so I based it all around that to begin with yeah and now it's more jiu-jitsu really yeah uh-huh. and and do you like do you enjoy jiu-jitsu I do and I also don't yeah <laughs> <laughs> like I did this gravel fest match <clears throat> yeah. which is really fun I really loved the event I, I was the say, like it was such a good time yeah. Yeah. did you go watch I was there yeah okay yeah yeah I thought it was so fun yeah but two minutes in being stuck in this girl's guard and not exactly not wanting to make a motion too big I was like I hate jiu-jitsu because yeah. <laughs> I'm like I have eight more minutes of this yeah. what if I'm here the whole time yeah. um, but I, I enjoy that it's this massive puzzle and yeah. it's endless there's yeah. like endless hallways and caverns and just all this stuff you can learn co- constantly yeah it's crazy um, isn't yeah. it uh-huh. we, me and Jacob were just talking about because Jacob's thinking about possibly getting into jiu-jitsu uh-huh. he's never done it before but and we were just saying that you know it's um it seems intimidating for a lot of people to to walk into an MMA gym and learn jujitsu and things mm-hmm. like that. But same thing, jujitsu. I feel like is like a puzzle to figure out. Yeah. And obviously, when you go in the gym, not everyone's trying to absolutely murder you, but everyone's trying to win. Yes, mm-hmm. and it is like that. So once you take out the, I think people get put off by the fighting thing. Mm-hmm. Like I know a lad, a load of lads who pull up outside a jujitsu gym. They want to try and do it for the first time, and they just sit in their car and they never walk in there. Oh. Because they're, <laughs> My heart. They, they, yeah, because they think I'm gonna get battered in there. Oh, no. But once you go and you realize the type of gym you're in and the lads that are there, that no one's there to, everyone's there to learn and help each yeah. other. So when you start looking at jujitsu from that way, it's such a mind game. Yeah. And obviously, it's very physical, but it's it's it's. It's a mind game first yeah. and foremost as well. I think the thing I like most about jiu-jitsu is jiu-jitsu culture and yeah. jiu-jitsu people. And yeah, yeah the, it's so warm and welcoming, I it find. Is. Yeah. yeah. Um, especially here. I, I think it's maybe people from the UK or Liverpool in particular. But everyone, Liverpool is a very warm city. So but, warm. Everyone's yeah. so sweet. Yeah. yeah. Uh-huh. And then jiu-jitsu <clears throat> community as well. Like I did the ADCC trials on the West Coast. Yeah. Um, and How that, was that? It was, it was awesome. Like, again, it, the experience for me was... It just holds a special place in my heart because yeah. everyone was so welcoming and just seeing people um, being so kind to each other on the mat itself. Whereas wrestling, at least in women's wrestling, like the handshakes are often like a slap of the hand to get that person's hand out of your way. And yeah. it's very uh, tense, very tense. And I find jujitsu to be less like that overall. So I, li- I like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um- how did you find Grapple Fest overall? Because like, it's a, it's a, it's a, obviously one of the biggest shows. Yeah, it was amazing. I'm so, thank you so much to Tomo for inviting me <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and and having me on the card. And I thought it was so sick when I walked in. I was like, where am I? <laughs> it's like its own. I felt like I walked into a different um, universe. Yeah. Yeah. And then once the crowd filled up and all everybody just from various layers of yeah. the you know like upstairs and all along the staircase, I was like, this is such a sick place to be able to compete and yeah. show your skill set. Yeah. Yeah, it was such a good atmosphere in there as well. Like I've been to Grapple Fest a few times to watch, and um, Luke, you know mm. Luke, who, Luke Johnson. I probably did. Yeah, he was training. He, he trains mm. with Matty Holmes, and okay, yeah, and yeah, yeah. So uh-huh. he was there the other night, and he competed, and he won um, via armbar. So he was, he's been my one of my coaches for a long. Oh, really? Time, okay, yeah. nice. Yeah. Um, so he, he, that was his first show on Grapple Fest, and he's, he, uh, he's done really well as well. But it's such a great show. Yeah. I think it's a, such a big show, um, especially from around here it's such a big show to be on and obviously Matty won as well and yeah. it's such a have you been training under Paul have you I have yeah and he helped me a lot yeah. and literally just three practices I mean, two and a half so thank you to Paul as well yeah. <laughs> uh, he already made my jiu-jitsu better yeah. significantly um, and Matty helped coach me so yeah. that was nice too he helped me a lot as well before and after um, just on some technical pieces that suit my style Yeah, Paul's been really really great and yeah. just the next gen system both for, for for MMA in particular, yeah, is suits me really well as a wrestler. Like, yeah, their style is perfect for me. So it I think is, I'll probably yeah. spend more time here as well. Do you think uh, so? Just yeah, to, I'd like to and learn their style. A bit I was going to say, do you think you'll you'll come back here often or? I I would like to for sure. Yeah, yeah. I think we have to discuss with my coaches and see how it fits in. Yeah, um, I think I'll be competing in Europe. I know I'll be competing in Europe actually soon as well. So maybe being able to put them together in wrestling or in MMA. In MMA, yeah. Uh-huh, wow. Uh-huh, okay. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do, you, what, do you know what organization you're or you're yeah, not? So, say, yeah, or? yeah. Um, Gamma, it's, it's, I'm still amateur, so I competed right. for them once already. And they host, they're they're looking to get um, amateur MMA into the Olympic Games. And there's another oh. organization doing the same thing, IMAF. Yeah. And they're, 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 they're undecided on the locations of these tournaments, but it's going to be somewhere over here, not, not in the U.S. So, yeah. yeah. Yeah, the first one was in um, Amsterdam, and I competed in Amsterdam. That was my first fight. Oh, was it? How yeah. did you find that? Were you nervous or? 
that was the craziest part. I wasn't nervous at all. Oh, really? Yeah, and I get super nervous for rest. I'm not super nervous, but I get nervous for wrestling for sure. Yeah. And I was nervous for my, the jiu-jitsu match, which it didn't, for me, it do- doesn't matter at all. You know, I'm not, jiu-jitsu isn't my sport. Yeah. Um, but that was, for me, that first fight was a test event to see if I've never been in a fight in my life. Like, really? never a bar fight, never an, any fight. Oh, really? Yeah, in fact, my mom, after the fight, she was, my mom's so funny. She's like, <laughs> yeah, we didn't think you were gonna be able to do that. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> really? It's like we didn't think you could be violent. Really? Uh, but um That's so interesting. Yeah, I thought so too. But for me it was really interesting because like from the moment I started getting my hands wrapped all the way through the warm-up, through the fight, and then for a bit after the fight, I was in this zone. I was in the like locked into flow. And but I didn't have to do anything. Like for wrestling, I, I have do breathing exercises and I have various techniques that I use. Um yeah to get myself to an optimal state. And it just clicked on. And I was talking to someone after a guy that was on Team USA as well for that tournament. And I was like, I'm just like, I was actually talking to myself. I was like, why did it feel like that? Like staring off into space. And he he was like, wrestling is like a controlled experiment. So if you go out of bounds, you, the time stops and you get to walk back in. And if you, if your hair tie comes out or you lose a contact, then the referees let you put it back in. But that, that doesn't exist in fighting. And the stakes are so high that, for me, the way my brain works, um, some people call it ADHD. <laughs> it was like the best thing to hyper focus me because the stakes are so high. I'm gonna either gonna get put to sleep or knocked unconscious if I don't focus. Yeah. So it, everything just turned on, and yeah. then I was like, okay, I think this is for me. This sport is for me. Yeah. So did you did you feel pressure? Up until yes, but when like I said, when my hands got wrapped and all the way through, I really? just felt on. I didn't feel like I was considering anything. I wasn't thinking or not thinking I was just doing what was right in front of me. I was just very deeply in the moment. Wow. Um, yeah, it was sick. I don't know if that'll continue. I don't know if it's because it's so new. I'm just yeah. going to say it will so that I, like, it continues. Yeah. You know? <laughs> Tell yourself this, it will. Yeah. yeah. That's so interesting. It was great. To, especially, I didn't know that you'd not ever had a fight like that before as well. Yeah, yeah. That's so interesting because, I, th- I spoke, do you think because you've been doing wrestling for so long that you feel the way you do about it that p- because there's ultimately pressure? Because you, you, I think you so. built up such a rep, uh, reputation for yourself. I think that's part of it. Um, I know the field of play so well. So yeah. there was a lot, there There was way more unknown with MMA. And I think yeah. there always will be because there's so many more tools that the amount of unknown almost made it like, nah, whatever, I'm just going to do what yeah. I can. Whereas wrestling, I pretty much know every possible, every possibility. And it's about making the right decisions. Um so I think I can get in my head about like, what if I make the wrong decision? Yeah, it comes from a, a place of, of a lot of overthinking then, I For suppose, sure. doesn't it? Yeah, because yeah. you know so much. Yeah, yeah. And then also with wrestling, um, I forgot what I was going to say. You can cut that part out. <laughs> <laughs> there was something really specific I was going to say, but I lost it. <laughs> yeah, so we were talking about the, pr- the pressure you feel. And, you know, yeah. I, I think it's interesting actually because cause you do know so much, your knowledge on wrestling and once you get into that place where you do overthink, oh, this could happen or that could happen or I could do this, I could do that. You, oh, your I mind's know. now cluttered, isn't it? Yes, yes. Whereas with the MMA, you think, well, there's stuff I do know and there's stuff I don't know and what will be will be. Right, exactly. And then you're in flow, like you said, in flow state and yeah. you won. It, uh, two, yeah, exactly. <laughs> two things I remember I was going to say. Um, the first is that wrestling is also, it's just a different setup. You have four years to accomplish your goal and cause, because it goes in Olympic cycles. So oh, when right. you start, you, you basically need to commit to an Olympic cycle. Um, you could just wrestle to wrestle, but sponsors are not going to sponsor you if you're not committed oh, to the Olympic dream. And that actually kind of, I think that's part of what took it out of it, at, the fun out of it for me. Personally, just because um, to make everything about one day in a four year time period. And that's I mean, that's part of the what you need to manage for yourself as an Olympic athlete or Olympic hopeful is to make every day just for that day versus, yeah. you know, it's a, it's just a tricky thing to be to have that constant time pressure. Whereas MMA, I'm it's like every moment is just for itself because I'm not on any specific timeline um, to go pro. We'll go pro when it when it feels right. Yeah. When, you know, and go into one of these major organizations when the time is right. Like everything is literally just going to be when the time is right because yeah. that's how it works versus making sure that I'm, I think that's part of what it is with wrestling is like, I have to be the best I can be on this date in May in order to make the team and then to, to win a medal. It's a bit tricky. It's just a, it's just an interesting situation to put yourself in, to yeah. dedicate your whole life to one day. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and I think that's probably where the pressure comes. Like it's such, yeah. it's pressure that normal people at home who don't do, live this life will never understand. Yes. I remember seeing um, Paddy talking about, you know, the, 
there's a small percentage of people who are professional fighters like yourselves mm. and stuff and um, athletes. And he said, you know, own, there's not many people on this earth that will ever understand what it's like to stand there and get your hand raised or mm. if you lose as well. It's we only get to experience that and it's the adrenaline rush and the, all the things that come with it are uh, one of the most feeling, most insane feelings you've ever had and there's yeah. most people never experience it. So to have the pressure of the build-up to it as well, yeah, you've got to have a strong mind yeah, to get yeah. through that. Yeah, and then not an, a strong but not overactive because then it'll, it's the blocking effect and that's probably what I dealt with most in my career and that I, but it's, it's, everything happened perfectly and I wouldn't change any piece of it or even the things that I, you know, the things that I had to work out about myself. Yeah. For me, I really believe that everything happened in wrestling exactly how it should. Like, I didn't ever make the Olympic team. I, I became the Olympic alternate twice. Yeah. Um. So in wrestling to make the team, you have to wrestle through a bracket of the best people in the United States and then each side will come together. So the winner of this side, winner of this side, and then you wrestle a best two out of three matches. Right. And so the first um, Olympic trial finals I made, I was winning the first match and ended up losing. And then I won the second match and I lost the third match. So I was the alternate. And for wrestling, there's only six weight classes for women and men at the Olympic Games. Uh, and only one person goes versus other sports. There's a you know a few from multiple con- from every country or whatever. Yeah. And then this last, in 2021, last year, um, I I lost both matches of the, the Olympic trial finals. Right. But all, all that to say, I really genuinely believe everything happened exactly the way it was supposed to for my career in MMA um, because yeah. I learned so, so much. And really, I, I don't know that there's many women in the sport of MMA that have competed as much as I have. There are, for sure. Like Sarah yeah. McMahon is an Olymp- Olympic silver medalist, Rhonda and various others. But a lot of these girls are learning to compete in the cage. And yeah. I have so many years of competition and I, I just have like these a deep understanding of what's yeah. necessary. Almost um, like it's preparing you for yeah. Well, yeah. the next chapter, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Which is which I'm sure is gonna be incredible. But either way, it's the experience like the experiences that life takes you on is just incredible, isn't it? And I suppose do you do a lot of traveling? So much, yeah. And do that's you? one of the things that's dearest to my heart too, is just you being like able to traveling. travel. Yeah, yeah. Like fifty fifty one and fifty two countries now and a lot of it from wrestling. That's another thing I'm so grateful for wrestling for is I've been to Russia ten times, like all over Russia. Happy. Yeah, like everywhere in Russia. Really? Um a lot of Eastern Europe, like like Ukraine multiple times, a lot of places I wouldn't have gone otherwise Uzbekistan and then all of Asia is my favorite so Southeast Asia in particular yeah um so pretty much where oh, everywhere <laughs> yeah so where where is it that you call home now like San Diego, San Diego. yeah uh-huh. and that's where so in between all these traveling yeah. this is where you you are training yeah the most exactly of the time. yeah and my so, family's in Orange County which is like an hour and a half north Oh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So do you live there on your own? I do, yeah. I run a studio by myself. Oh, nice. Right. <laughs> yeah. oh, is that what you do? Yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. And how did you find that? Like, how did you find moving away from your family? Um, well, I moved away when I was 18 for my like family in total. This is the first time I'm back living in California since, oh, right. since I graduated high school. I moved up to, I moved out of the country to Canada and yeah. did my undergrad. And then I lived away, f- I lived in Arizona and Colorado and then back to Canada. And then um, I was just living in Arizona tra- and then the Olympic cycle ended. That's where I was doing my wrestling training. They yeah. have a really good program in Arizona. And I just, really it was a spiritual nudge. Like everything at this point, I is in alignment to that divine flow. And a lot of things don't make sense at the time, but I I felt like I was being guided to move to San Diego yeah. um, to, to train with Team Alliance and Coach Eric Del Fiero, um, where Dominic Cruz is out of as well, yeah. and a bunch of other really good fighters. Yeah. And I packed up my shit and moved <laughs> just yeah. because I felt like I knew it was the truth for me to do. I mean, like in my heart, I knew it was the right thing. And now looking back for months, I was like, why am I here? Because <laughs> really? I could have stayed in Arizona. Um, like Henry Cejudo and our main, the his gym slash the gym I had been training at is huge for MMA, Fight Ready. And there's people, there's so many champions out of Fight Ready and people literally come to Fight Ready, like Wei Li yeah. and um, Yuri Prohajka. And yeah. all these people are flying into <laughs> Arizona yeah. to do their eight or 12 week camps. Yeah. And I left, even though I had the, everything I needed. But I think one of the biggest reasons, and I, and I couldn't have known it at the time, but um, I just needed to get away from wrestling. Yeah. Otherwise, I would have just kept wrestling. Right. And I was still one foot in, one foot out, like for the first year yeah. um, after the Olympic trials. But then it, o- over time, I just kept getting shown like, no, this is the path for you. This is the path for you. This path is, it was everything you needed, but that chapter is now moving on to something else. Like we're, we're in a different book now. Yeah. Uh-huh. And do you find that, and obviously with your following your own path that you feel, you know, feels right. <laughs> that can also 
be a lonely path, can't it? Because there's Super a, you go, lonely, yeah. I was going to say, you go to a lot of places where you don't know people. Yeah. You're on your own. You have to to make meet new people, make new friends. And yeah. do you find how do you deal with all that? Yeah, spending a lot of time alone as well. I a lot of time alone, um, which is good for personal growth, like as a character, isn't it? It's character uh, building. Yeah, exactly. I think that. I've been guided to walk alone for a long time. And yeah. that's like slowly, I'm slowly coming out of that phase too. Yeah. But um, in fact, when I, I was living in Arizona and I basically got a spiritual nudge to move and and I, it was to move to Canada, this place called Calgary. And um, there's a specific coach there, Paul Ragusa. Shout out Coach Paul. He helped <laughs> me a lot. He really helped me understand wrestling to a degree that I hadn't before. Yeah. And so I, I moved, I packed my shit, and yeah. <laughs> drove three days to Canada and um, I had one good friend there, but basically I was alone and then I end up feeling like I was supposed to live alone. And that's when a lot of like my, I'll just call them spiritual gifts and insights started to come through when I had the space to just sit with myself. And that's, I think, I don't know what people let people like to do or don't do, but I think a lot of people don't <laughs> like to sit with themselves, you know, and I didn't either at yeah. first. And I, and, yeah. but I, I realized it was something I just had to do. Yeah. And, um, that's where I really got to know myself and really got to the bottom of a lot of things that were holding me back or I, I had going on in my own mind or yeah. deep-rooted shit, like plucking it out when yeah. you don't have anything to do but sit with yourself. Yeah, yeah. it's interesting, isn't it, that, that, it's, that you say that's, I think, where a lot of people block stuff out because they don't want to sit alone with yeah. their thoughts because yeah. they, they don't know where their mind's going to go. Yeah, it's really easy to just fill our schedule with social activities and yeah. going out or even just hanging out with friends. A lot of the time I, I would... For, during that period of my life, it was like a year of, it, it really was a year of isolation. Um, mm. And then COVID. So it was double time isolation. Yeah. Like I, I specifically went to Canada with the, the thought process that I'm going to dedicate. At, it was supposed to be eight months and then COVID hit and the Olympic trials got moved. And I was like, oh, fuck. This just turned into like a year and eight months. Yeah. And, um, but I went with the, the intent of just dedicating myself to my craft, yeah. being wrestling. And I didn't realize how much of the spirituality stuff was going to come into play. Um, yeah. So, yeah, it, that was all a part of it as well, of just, just honing in on one thing and yeah. not being distracted and not and choosing not to get actually too involved in, like, the team culture and go out too much. But yeah. that, that kind of bit me in the ass a bit in the end because um, I don't think we're meant to be in isolation too long. <laughs> <laughs> no. no, I don't yeah. think as humans we are. No, no, we're not. <laughs> Definitely not. I didn't figure that out too. But then yeah. moving to San Diego, there were— I, there's just a lot of nights where I've cried myself to sleep because I'm like, I'm alone. I'm very low. I've been very lonely yeah. at points. But again, it's like for me, my path is deeply intertwined with spirituality. And it, it's just given me the time to study and to understand everything in a different way. Find out a lot about yourself, don't you, as well? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's really like, yeah, it's a mad world. Yeah. <laughs> it's a mad world, mm -hmm. isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, listen, thank you so much for coming on. It's been such a nice time having yeah, you on. Thank you so much. Thank you I mean, so you've told me a lot of stuff that I, <laughs> I didn't know and very interesting stuff. You know, you've got a lot of knowledge on that on that ayahuasca and all that sort of Plant thing. Plant shit. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a mad little world to delve into that, but it's, it's very interesting. I'm sure a lot of people at home will be very interested in that. But thanks so much for yeah, coming on. Yeah, thank you. And uh, obviously, I wish you all the best for the future. And much. I know that you're going to smash it and... You do. There's big things ahead for you. And I know that because I've I've also seen that you've um, been training with so many different athletes. Like you said, Henry Cejudo, yeah. Dominic Cruz, all these people, and so I'm sure that path's going to continue. So yeah, thank you, thank so, you much. so much for yeah, coming thanks on. Thanks everybody. <laughs>